there. It's Dr. Porter, the Austin Love Doctor, and I put out a post last week about Synthroid and about people saying that their thyroid's normal, but they feel like something's wrong. And this is something that I get in my clinic every single day. And I've been getting a lot of people saying, oh my gosh, you look so good, and how do you have so much energy, and you lost a lot of weight, what's your secret? Like, that, I get that question all the time. So I'm going to give you the secret. And the secret is not feeling like crap and having your thyroid uh, balance better. Okay, so imagine this, you like feel tired and you just feel stupid all the time. You go out to the car and you realize you forgot something as you come back into the house and then you get there and you can't remember what you forgot. So you go back out to the car again, hoping you'll remember and then you, you know, do that. You, just, you get dumb, you can't lose any weight. Um, no matter how much you diet and exercise, it's like nothing's changing and you feel cold all the time and just like you have no energy. That sounds like a lot of women, moms, right? And a lot of people, but especially us, and we kind of just say, oh, that's normal, that's what being a parent's like. Or maybe you bring it up to your gynecologist, um, maybe bring it up to your family doctor, and they tell you that everything's normal. They're gonna check your thyroid and your thyroid's normal. So I'm gonna tell you why your thyroid probably isn't actually normal. You know how I know that? Because you have symptoms of hypothyroidism and your thyroid is not normal. I'm gonna explain why really quickly. And what my secret is, it's managing my thyroid and getting my thyroid balanced. And I've lost like 30 pounds, I have a lot more muscle now, um, and I feel so much better and I'm not tired and that's how I can do all this stuff. Okay, so your thyroid is like basically the control center of your brain. And um, it's made inside your thyroid gland and you have, sorry, your thyroid is a gland, but you make hormone inside that gland. And there's a part of your brain called the pituitary, it's a gland in your brain that tells your, your thyroid gland to make thyroid hormone, and I'll get to that in just a second. But basically, your thyroid is responsible for your temperature, your metabolism, your brain function, and your energy. Those are like the four main things. Um, and when you have low thyroid, you feel weak and tired and cold, and you're gaining weight, and your body fat goes up, and you just feel like brain fog. This is what I like to call feeling like crap. And just this overall sense of like, I don't feel good. I don't, what the heck's wrong? Like I, I can't lose weight, I'm just tired and I'm blah, right? Feeling like crap. So that's low thyroid. And you go to the doctor and they draw, what, a TSH. I'm gonna get into what that is. So, anywho, um, a TSH is a screening test, is what it is. And it is what the, um, they decided back in the 60s or 70s that the thyroid stimulating hormone was a screening test for thyroid. So TSH, thyroid, I have horrible doctor handwriting and you're not gonna care because I'm charming. So thyroid stimulating hormone, that's what that stands for, okay? And remember I told you that there's this thing in your brain called the pituitary. So your pituitary, which is your brain, brain, okay? It's a gland that tells your body to make hormones. It tells your ovaries to make estrogen. It tells your thyroid to make thyroid hormone. Well, that is where TSH is produced. Now, if you have, there's some, probably 30 to 40% of Americans have hypothyroidism, but a lot of them are undiagnosed. And the reason is, is that there's primary hypothyroidism, which is defined by your thyroid basically not making enough hormone. And when your thyroid doesn't make enough hormone, your TSH actually goes up. It's made by your brain and it's like your body, it's like a thermostat, right? So if, you're, if it's hot in the house and you have the thermostat set at 60 and you're sweating, your thermostat's gonna kick on and go, come on, let's like blow some more cold air in here. So if that's what your, that's what your pituitary does. So if your thyroid is not producing, um, like I'm riding the horse lately, so I'm like, come on, giddy up girl, like you get the crop out and, and the horse starts trotting. So your, your pituitary says, thyroid, come on, pick it up. You're not doing your job. So if you have a normal, have a low thyroid, hypothyroidism, low thyroid, if somebody uses that term, that means they actually have a high TSH because they have a low thyroid hormone. So their body, is, their, their TSH goes up. So we detect some people that way. The problem is, is that we miss so many people, probably like at least half of the people are missed because the TSH doesn't tell you the whole story. So, you have your TSH, your pituitary, then you have your thyroid. And inside your thyroid, you make T3 and T4. 
Again, I told you about that handwriting, right? T4. And this one, okay? So don't, don't ask me to say these words because they're really big and complicated. But the gist of it is, is that T3 is an active form of hormone. So T3 is active. Specifically something called free T3, which just is a fancy way of saying it's not bound to anything. So it's able to bind to a receptor in your thyroid. T4 is inactive. So this is inactive. Inactive. It means that your body can't use it that way. It has to be converted to T3 for your body to use it. So this is actually what Synthroid is, also known as a crappy drug, okay? And here's why Synthroid is a crappy drug. And it is the most commonly prescribed um, uh, medication in the history of the world. Um, as a class, the um, cholesterol medications like statins, Lipitor, Notorvastatin, and all those things were more. But as a single drug, thyroid is the, com the most prescribed drug Synthroid is the most prescribed drug in the history of the world. And it doesn't work for a lot of people, and this is why. So, normally, you have this feedback loop. So your thyroid makes these hormones, so here's your little gland. And normally, there's like a loop like this, sort of like with your thermostat. So if one goes down, the other goes up. So my thyroid production of my hormone goes down, so my thermostat says, hey, hey, make more, and my TSH will go up. The problem is, is that TSH will only go up if you have what we call primary hypothyroidism. So primor, primary hypothyroidism is basically like decreased production of hormone. But there's something called secondary hypothyroidism, and that is due to either a decrease of production or a decrease of the conversion of the active um, thyroid into the, the inactive thyroid into the active thyroid, or the, set, the receptors that you have on your gland are less sensitive. So it means that the hormone's there, but it can't bind to anything, so it's useless. It's like having a car that you won on the price is right, but they didn't give you the keys and you don't know how to hotwire anything. So great, nice car, and oh, and we don't have the title, so we can't sell it. It's worthless, and no gas. Okay, so I know I'm losing some people here, so let's go back. So your active thyroid is called free T3. Your TSH is just a screening test, and then your inactive thyroid is called T4. So remember from chemistry, there's this thing called equilibrium. So, so these should go, they kind of go back and forth, and that happens in your thyroid. So you have a little bit of inactive, it turns a little bit into active, and then to complicate things, this T4 can actually go to something called reverse T3, which is also inactive. So basically, the only thyroid hormone that is useful to me is when it's in this T3 form, okay? So you have that happening. Then you have some people who they make some T3, then they convert it to T4, um, and very little of it gets converted to T4. So these people might actually be hyperthyroid because they have a lot of active thyroid and their TSH may or may not be changed, but their inactive thyroid is a lot. And then the last group of people is all the people that I see all day long. And they're the unhappy people that have gone to their doctor six times and their doctor told them that they're fine and they know they're not fine and they're, or they've been on Synthroid for 20 years and they still feel cold all the time and they have no energy, they fall asleep at three o'clock and they can't lose weight. These are the people that are right here. So a lot of their active thyroid hormone inside their thyroid gets converted to inactive T4 and then their body has a hard time converting it back. So if you keep giving somebody this, aka Synthroid, raising my dose of Synthroid, like, oh, I was on 25 mics and now I'm on 150 micrograms, and it doesn't change anything because you still just have a whole bunch of inactive hormone that you can't do anything with. So you're still going to feel like crap. So my mom had her thyroid out and they put her on, everyone, Synthroid, because that's what you put people on when you're an endocrinologist. And she felt good, like they gave her a good dose and she felt good and then they brought her back in in like three months and what did they check? A TSH. And they said, oh, 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 your, your dose of Synthroid is too high. How do they know that? My mom felt good, she hadn't gained any weight, she felt good, she couldn't really even tell that her thyroid had been taken out of the little scar. But what they did 
was they treated the number and not the patient. And that's what people do. And that's why people come here, because I don't do that. I listen to people. So uh, TSH has a range of like 0 0.4 to say like 4.1, OK? That's the range of T4. When your lab draws, my lab draws it, it's going to tell me anything in that range is normal. So they freak out when you get below 0.4, your doctor does. So my mom went and they drew her TSH and they, they, it was like, you know, 0.2. So they freaked out and they lowered her dose of Synthroid. And they said, okay, you were taking 100, now take 50. So she did that for three months and they told her to come back. So she comes back in three months and what do they check? A TSH again. And guess what? Now her TSH is right smack dab in the middle. So her doctor's happy. But guess what? My mom's not happy because she gained 20 pounds. She's falling asleep at 2 o'clock every day. And nowhere in this equation did anybody ever actually stop to look at the level of the active thyroid hormone. The thyroid hormone that actually is responsible for alleviating all these symptoms. Controlling your temperature so you don't feel cold. Helping your metabolism so that you can build muscle and lose fat. Making you not feel stupid. Having energy. Protecting your heart. Protecting you against fatigue and weight gain and memory loss. Uh, decreasing your cholesterol, increasing your fat breakdown. All the, it, I, also known as not making you feel like crap. So my mom you know, said, I feel like crap, and what did the doctors do? They said, oh, but you can't possibly feel like crap because your TSH is right in the normal range. Not one time did they ever check her active thyroid hormone, her free T3, and that is the difference. I don't know why endocrinologists do that. I don't, that's, that's how we do it. That's how I was trained with, with BioT. Um, specifically, that's their kind of protocol. And so we rather, rather than checking your TSH, we do check it. Um, we check a whole thyroid panel, but what we mostly go off of is your free T3. So what is, your free T3 range is like 2.5 to say 4.2, okay? And it's on a bell curve. So that, what that means is this is, you know, this is 2.5, this is like 4.2, and um, this is like, I don't know, what's halfway in between, 3.5, right? Ish, 3.3, let's call it. So that's the 50th percentile. And then here you have the bottom 25 percentile and the top 25 percentile here. Or this is considered a cutoff. So the goal with, with my thyroid is to get it to 4.1 to 4.2. Just put you like on the other side of the mountain so you don't have any hill to climb up. So I started at 2.5, uh, which was still normal. Like, so if I'd been 2.4, now all of a sudden I'm not normal. Like, this is a range. This is a this is a bell curve plotted on. If we drew 10,000 people's free T3, what how, and we plotted them? What does this curve look like? Oh, half the people are right around 3.3. So then you've got these people that are you know on the low end, and and, and this captures 95 percent. They called it a confidence interval confidence interval. So this captures 95% of the people. So if you're here or here, then you're a freak, that something's wrong. So that's where that number came from, 2.5 to 4.2. So what I try to do is get my people to be like, you know, 3.9 at least to 4.2. How do you do that? Well, you don't take more Synthroid because odds are, if you have secondary hypothyroidism, um, if you have secondary hypothyroidism, which is all, most of my people, right? They have a normal TSH, and they have um, a T4 that's normal, and they have a, a 3T3 that's low. And by low, I don't mean 2.4. I mean you could have a normal TSH, a normal T4, and your free T3 is like 2.7. I don't want you climbing up the mountain. I want you looking down at the mountain how beautiful the world is. So that's why we replace thyroid and we have a goal of getting your free T3 to 4.1 to 4.2. How do we do that? It's not with Synthroid. So it's with either Nature Thyroid or Armor Thyroid or there's NP Thyroid. There's like, there's one more, W Thyroid. Basically it's, it's called desiccated thyroid and it's not synthetic. It's natural. It actually comes, it's, it's pig thyroids that are chewed, that are ground up. So if you're kosher um, and you can't have pork products, then you can get compounded T3 and T4. Um, but basically, Nature Thyroid has both T3 and T4 in it. So you're putting people in the equation 
where you're giving them a little bit of this and a little bit of that so that the people, you're supplying this directly, but you're also supplying T4, so some people actually do convert some of it to T3. So that's the better choice, and it's paid covered by insurance. With thyroid medication, you have to take it first thing in the morning. Um, most of the time, we start somebody on it. Like when I get up, I have my uh, bottle and I have my toothpaste sitting right like that. So when I go to brush my teeth, I take my pill, I take a sip of water, and then I take my shower, brush my teeth, get my clothes on, my makeup, whatever. And then it's been 30 minutes because you want to just take it with water and then wait 30 minutes before you have coffee or milk or anything like that. And we have you come back in like four weeks or so and we check and we try to titrate your thyroid hormone until you a feel better that's what i mostly care about do you feel better and when your symptoms are better then i don't care as so much about what this number is but ideally this would be the range would be kind of 3.9 or 4.1 to 4.2 and how do you know if you overshot it and what do you do so and, and we want to draw the lab about four to six hours after you took the medicine so if you took it at seven we want to have you come in at like noon or um, one o'clock to have your level drawn. So how do you know if you overdid it? Well, you'll ha you'll feel bad, like you'll feel crappy, but on the other end, you'll feel like just kind of palpitations or anxiety. Maybe you have some diarrhea. Um, uh, just don't feel right. Um, and so how do you fix it? Well, the half life of uh, nature thyroid is like six to eight hours. So you just don't take it the next day. And you say, okay, I was taking. 65 milligrams, so I'm gonna cut to 37 point or 32.5 milligrams every other day and then 65 on the other days. And we just kind of play with it a little bit until we find your happy spot. Um, and your happy spot is, again, when you don't feel crappy and when your doctor listens to you. And if this number happens to match that number to make me happy, then great. But I more care about where do these symptoms go? Do these symptoms go away? And so that's what happened to me. Like I, I still, if I go to a lecture hall, because uh, I go to conferences and stuff, I still sometimes have to wear like a little jacket or something, but I'm not freezing all the time. I can be in my clinic and not have to wear a white coat all the time. I've lost a bunch of weight. I've, I'm a lot leaner. Um, I haven't checked my cholesterol. I'll have my exam this year. Um, I don't have the brain fog and I have the energy to run a business, stay up till four in the morning, and 1.30 in the morning, which I did twice this week, and still get up at seven. And, sorry, it's a hot mess. Um, and, uh, and not be stupid and still care for my children and still volunteer with the junior league and, you know, do all the, walk three miles uh, five to six days a week and do all those things. So, if this sounds like you, if you're in the feeling like crap and you don't think that anybody's listening to you, just call me. Come in, I will see you. Um, and we will get things straightened out for you. You'll probably benefit from some testosterone too, um, especially for women with low libido. But the thyroid is key, um, and I hope this was helpful. Um, you can find me at austinlovedoctor.com, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel and listen to my podcast, which is available on iTunes. Thanks a lot.